Hi everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we'll learn something that every developer has to deal with, or API request in a React application using Axios. But before we get started, let me tell you something. For testing purpose, I have already set up some dummy API request in a server folder. So the API we'll be calling is fully functional. No mocks, no magic tricks, just real requests and real responses. Now in this tutorial, I'll be teaching you only the post method, but you have got two ways to handle different API methods. One, either you can create a prop called methods or whichever you feel of generic name and pass different request types dynamically or create some different separate functions for get put and delete methods. All right, let's look at our main function. This is the main function that will handle our post request. Here we are passing three parameters inside this object. One is the variable. Basically, this is the API endpoint we'll be calling. I have created a separate file uh, and importing those endpoints from the way we are calling the APIs. The second one is the payload. This contains the data which we want to send to the API. And the third one is the loading. This is a function that controls the loading state. So we can show a spinner or a text when the request is happening. All these three uh, props are coming from the props file named as API config props as I have imported above. Next, here we are building the final API URL dynamically. env.8 API URI is our base URL stored in the environment variable as you can see here. And the variable is specific to the API endpoints, which you can see that we are passing through a different file, as I mentioned earlier, which is an endpoint. And this is an example you can see for the uh, users we have created. Then the URL would become like this. Next is handling the authentication. Most of the APIs need authentication. So we grab our auth token using the use token function. This use token function is nothing but a function which I created just for the demo purpose, which I'm fetching data from the session storage based on the token. And uh, it depends on your personal project uh, where you are actually use, uh, storing your token. Let it be in a session storage or a local storage or even in a cookies. It depends on yourself. Now let's get into some of the advanced methods in here. Setting up retries and timeout methods. To make our API more resilient, we'll have to add these two methods. Let's understand what are these two. So retries is if the, let's say if the request fails due to network issue, we'll try again three times. It depends on whichever count you want to add in here. So uh, for example, let's say if there was a network issue, you don't have to make a call again immediately or manually. Uh, it will be done automatically if you perform these actions in here. And timeout. We'll set it to 10 seconds because no one likes an API hanging forever, right? Now let's break down this function. First, we turn on the loading state before making any request. Second, we run a while loop to attempt the request three times if it fails, like I mentioned earlier. If we get a 200 request or let's say 201, which is OK or created response, we return the data. If it's a network error, we retry the request. If we run out of the attempts, we throw the error directly, which I mentioned the above using the two methods called retries and the timeout. Okay, fine. What if something goes wrong? We don't want ugly errors popping up in our UI, right? So let's handle them properly. First, we check if error is an Axios error. If it is, we extract them. To understand, the HTTP status codes are 400, 403 and 404, etc. The error messages are from the API response we are getting. Now we can handle the error more gracefully. If the error is 404, 400 or 403, we show the error message. If it's a network error, we tell the users to check their internet. If, an, if anything else, we log it and show a generic error. Catching this error. Well, 
Here's the final touch. If an error happens, we pass it to the API error response which I explained now. Finally, we turn off the loading state whether the request succeeds or fails depends. Oh, and I know this is a lot to take in. So I have provided the full source code with comments explaining everything. You will find the link in the description. So let's quickly recap what we have learned today. One, we built a post request function with the Axios. Two, we added authentication headers. We handled network retries and timeouts. We created a solid error handling system. Now your challenge. Extend this function to handle get put and post delete function. I mean request. Drop a comment when you complete it or if you need any kind of help on that. If you found this video helpful, smash a like button and probably you can subscribe for more NoBS coding tutorials. Yeah, well, see you in the next one. Thank you.